Now, there are seven warning signs that you're eating too much sugar. And this is very, very important because the vast majority of the population has stages of pre-diabetes and they just don't have a clue that they're pre-diabetic. You see, the best analogy of this would be your gas gauge in your car. You have a little gauge that will tell you how much gas you have, right? You, you can have a full tank or an empty tank or anything in between. But there's this little red part, which is you're going into empty. That lets you know that it's time to go to the gas station and fill up, or you will run out of gas. That is equivalent to being a pre-diabetic. Pre-diabetes is right before diabetes. Your blood sugars are starting to go up, but not to the level where there are um, diabetes quite yet. But it's inevitable unless you change something. But there's also this insulin resistance thing that comes even before prediabetes. So insulin resistance is also prediabetes. Yet the big problem with insulin resistance is that doctors rarely, rarely test for it. In fact, a lot of doctors don't even know what the test is. It's called HOMA-IR. So you're measuring fasting blood glucose and you're measuring your fasting insulin to determine if you are insulin resistant. And so statistics say that about 33% of the population has insulin resistance. But my question is, since doctors don't do the test, how do we know it's not a lot more? In fact, it is a lot more. It's probably more like 60 to 75% of the population has insulin resistance, which really is a pre-diabetic situation. So insulin resistance comes from too much insulin. What causes too much insulin? too much sugar. And it is very important to understand these warning signs that I'm going to talk about simply because the doctors don't do this test and you need certain clues to know you're a pre-diabetic or AKA consuming too much sugar. Now the American Heart Association says that you shouldn't be consuming any more than six to nine teaspoons of sugar per day, but that's added sugar. Okay. And an average person is consuming at least nine teaspoons of sugar per day. But an average teenager consumes 18.5 teaspoons of added sugar every single day. That's like 74 grams of sugar. You see one teaspoon of sugar equals four grams of sugar. So that's very important to know because of this next thing I'm gonna tell you or ask you, don't most carbohydrates turn into sugar eventually? And the answer is yes. All carbohydrates eventually turn into sugar except fiber, but all the bread, the pasta, the cereal, the crackers, the biscuits, the waffles, the pancakes all turn into sugar eventually. So what will shock you is the amount of hidden sugars that you may be consuming right now without even knowing about it. The amount of sugar that a person consumes in their daily carbohydrates, if we look at the average, it's about 275 grams. That's 275 grams of sugar, okay? Now, if we look at teaspoons, that would be 68.8 teaspoons of sugar. That is mind-blowing. That is so far in excess. No wonder that the entire population is going full speed ahead right into diabetes. That's like a little more than a half a pound of sugar a day, but it's not added sugar. It's just your carbohydrates that you consume. That's 0.27 kilograms every single day. All right, before I get into the warning signs, I just want to real simply explain what diabetes is in very simple terms. You have type one diabetes and you have type two diabetes. Both of these are situations where you have high levels of sugar. With type one diabetes, the pancreas has stopped making insulin, okay? So if there's no insulin, there's nothing to push the blood sugar down. So with type one, you have to take insulin or your blood sugars are completely out of control and they keep going high just because you don't have the controlling hormone to keep it in check. Now with type two diabetes, you have this high sugar because the insulin is not able to push it down because it's dysfunctional. In other words, you have insulin in your body, but it's not working. At the receptor level, it's not receiving and it's called insulin resistance. So if I were to talk to you right now and you had earplugs, uh, you wouldn't hear what I'm saying. So I would have to shout. That's what type two diabetes is. You have this situation where you initially have high levels of hormone, insulin hormone, that's a communication, but it's not being received because there's an earplug on the other side of that communication. That communication is resistant. And so the body then just makes more and more and more. Thus the person shouting. 
until eventually the pancreas becomes tired and it starts to become wore out. So then your insulin starts going down, down, down. And then the person will start needing insulin as a medication, even though they're not type one, they're type two. So that's the simple difference between type one and type two. And there's just four little parts of your body that's affected by blood sugar, okay? Uh, the eye, okay, the kidney, uh, the nerves and your brain and your blood vessels. So other than that, it doesn't really affect anything other than the leading cause of blindness, the leading cause of kidney disease or kidney dialysis, the main cause of peripheral neuropathy, which is numbness and tingling in your feet or the fingertips. And it affects the brain like dementia and Alzheimer's, which is considered type three diabetes. But other than that, it doesn't affect any part of the body. All right, what are the warning signs? Number one, frequent urination. And a lot of times it's at night, but sometimes it's during the day. The body is trying to get rid of the glucose because it considers too much a poison. So it's going to get rid of it. But with the glucose comes the water. The body just can't get rid of glucose. It gets rid of the water as well. So you're going to be peeing a lot more than usual. So wherever the glucose goes, the water goes. All right. Number two, you're going to be thirsty more than usual. And you may even be thirsty for um, cold water with ice cubes. And you might also have dry mouth and you are probably dehydrated. So your body is getting rid of fluid and you're drinking more. Those are two real big clues that you're going right into diabetes or you already have diabetes. But realize it's not like an on off switch. You kind of go into this condition slowly over time. And then over the course of like 15 years, you end up with a full blown diabetes. But initially you might have just one or two of the symptoms. And it gets worse and worse and worse simply because they don't really test for insulin resistance, which comes before prediabetes. All right. Number three, uh, you're hungry between meals. You need a snack between meals. You cannot go for any period of time without the need for food. So this is why you usually are consuming these energy bars or you don't leave home without some snack. Now what's happening at the cellular level is the cells are not getting fuel. They're not getting nutrients. So the cells are just like hungry all the time. And they're definitely not satisfied. Even when you eat, you can stuff yourself, but you still feel that you're not satisfied. This is why people keep snacking even when they're full. All right, number four, blurred vision. Now, you remember I talked about the water goes where the sugar goes? So because there's high level of sugar in your blood vessels, you're getting a fluid imbalance. So the fluid is actually leaking out of the blood vessels into the lens of the eye, and that's causing you to be a little blurred. And this could happen either in one eye or both eyes. All right, number five, you become easily irritated. People get on your nerves, but you are a much calmer and better when you eat a meal. This is the blood sugar issue. This is either insulin resistance or prediabetes. It means that you're consuming too much sugar. All right, number six, another indication that you're consuming too much sugar is you are getting tired a lot more often than you should, despite how much sleep you get. And it may actually affect you after lunch. You need to take a nap. This just means you have higher levels of insulin. Insulin makes you go to sleep. It's the thing that happens after a Thanksgiving meal when you eat a lot of carbs that you need to go take a nap. In fact, when I was in my 30s and I knew nothing about nutrition, the way that I would get myself to sleep would be to raise my insulin levels up by consuming an entire pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I was inducing a sugar coma and it helped me sleep, at least initially until it kept me up at night because all that sugar was depleting my potassium. And then with low potassium, the pulse rate goes up. So try to sleep when your pulse is pounding. I mean, like you're putting your head in the pillow and you feel this little boom, 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 boom. All right. And the last clue that you're consuming too much sugar is you're getting genital itching. Now it could be on your genitals or around your genitals. It can also show up in a rash or a redness. What's going on? That is candida. Candida lives and depends on sugar. You will not be able to get rid of candida unless you starve it of its main fuel source, which is sugar. Without sugar, Candida cannot exist. And this is why a low carb diet is the way to go. Now, if you haven't seen my video 
on what would happen after seven days of giving up sugar, check it out. I put it up right here.